overclockers, my name's Brownie and welcome to your bi-weekly news roundup. In today's BIOS update, I've got the latest info on ARC's long-awaited remaster, why the future of PC building might look rather different, and all the top games releasing this month, plus much more. So let's get into it. Kicking off the gaming chapter with our first story, which is bad news for fans of Ark Survival Evolved, because they're gonna have to wait a lot longer to enjoy the remastered version of the game, Ark Survival Ascended. The launch date has been pushed back from August this year to October. Ark Survival Ascended is a remaster of Survival Evolved, a popular survival game that features dinosaurs, crafting, and base building. Ark first launched back in 2015, but it still comfortably sits amongst the top 20 most played games on Steam. The remaster is going to feature improved graphics, performance and gameplay, as well as new content and features. Studio Wildcard, the developer of Ark, announced the delay and blamed the setback on the new engine that powers the remaster, Unreal Engine 5.2, which is supposedly incredibly exciting, but also challenging to work with. The studio said that it needs more time to support a fully cross-platform, moddable game ecosystem on consoles and PC. The delay also affects the release of the DLC expansions that are included with the remaster. The Island expansion will be available at launch, but Scorched Earth has been postponed to December 2023. Ragnarok and Aberration will follow in Q1 2024, and the rest of the maps will come later. To compensate players, Studio Wildcard has offered a launch discount for Ark Survival Ascended. Due to the launch version now featuring less content than originally intended, the early access price has been dropped to $44.99, with a launch discount bringing it down to $39.99. The studio has also extended the life of the original game servers, which were supposed to go offline in August. They will now shut down in September, although you can still play the game on one of the thousands of available private servers. Additionally, Ark 2, the sequel to Ark Survival Evolved, was previously delayed until the end of 2024, after being announced back in 2020. The next gaming story is about the terrible fail that was the Lord of the Rings Gollum. Today Lake Entertainment has announced that it will actually stop developing games completely and focus on publishing instead. The decision comes after the game received thousands of negative reviews from critics and players who criticised everything from the dodgy graphics to the boring gameplay, empty story and game-breaking bugs. This studio said in a statement that it was very grateful for the opportunity to work on the Lord of the Rings franchise, but admitted that the game did not live up to its expectations. That is putting it rather lightly, as the game has a devastating Metacritic score of 39 out of 100 and hundreds of negative reviews over on Steam. If you were hoping to try Gollum at some point after picking up in some sort of future sale for like £3, Dedalic Entertainment said it will release at least one more patch for the game to help improve its performance and quality. The studio also revealed that it had cancelled a follow-up Lord of the Rings game that was currently in development, but it still has eight promising releases planned for this financial year as a publisher. While Dedalix Entertainment's Lord of the Rings games are unfortunately no more, thankfully there are still plenty of other games based on the fantasy world to look forward to, such as an untitled game from Weta Digital, Lord of the Rings Return to Moria, and a Lord of the Rings MMO from Amazon. 
Kicking off the hardware chapter this week is some interesting techie news for PC builders. When you're building a PC, it's easy to overlook something as boring as all those different power connectors. But last year's burning GPU fiasco taught us all how important they are. We now know the upcoming ATX 3.1 and PCI Express 6.0 specification update will also incorporate the 12 volt 2 times 6 connector proposed by PCI SIG. The new standards are set to change the way we build and upgrade our PCs. Although backwards compatible, these standards will introduce new features, improve performance and enhance compatibility for PC components. As to the changes made, ATX 3.1 uses a new 12-pin power connector for the motherboard, which replaces the 24-pin connector used by ATX 2.03. The new connector is smaller, more efficient, and more flexible, as it can deliver up to 600 watts of power with a single cable, or up to 1200 watts with two cables. PCIe 6.0 doubles the data transfer rate of PCIe 5.0. This will increase in speed and will enable faster performance for applications that require higher bandwidth, such as AI, machine learning, gaming, and data centers. The new 12 volt 2 times 6 connector sense pins have been repositioned to establish a more secure connection. The cable design and quality requirements have also been tightened and it will have support for 150 and 300 watts in addition to the existing 450 and 600 watt modes. Both ATX 3.1 and PCI Express 6.0 are expected to be available in consumer products by late 2023 or early 2024. Meanwhile, the PCI SIG has not yet finalized the revised specification for the 12 volt 2 times 6 connector, but it is expected that the next generation of GPUs, likely to be launched in 2025, will incorporate the updated connector. That means the PCs coming in the next couple of years are likely to look very, very different to what they do now. Almost like the huge change that we saw from floppy drives, IDE devices, and PS2 peripherals and mice to where we are now. Moving on to the next hardware story this week, where Asus has been busy showing off a prototype of a GeForce RTX 4060 Ti graphics card that also features M.2 SSD slots. This allows users to add extra storage to their system without using a motherboard slot. The card is designed to take advantage of the unused PCIe lanes on the RTX 4060 Ti, which only uses 8 instead of the full 16 available on most motherboards. The prototype Asus GeForce graphics card is based on NVIDIA's typical 4060 Ti with 8GB of GDDR6 memory. There's a single 8-pin power connector and a dual fan cooling system. It's all pretty standard except from the two M.2 2280 slots, one on the front and one on the back of the PCB. The card uses a PCIe switch to split the 16 PCIe lanes from the motherboard into three groups. Eight lanes for the GPU, four lanes for the front M.2 slot, and four lanes for the back M.2 slot. This way, the GPU and the SSDs can operate at their maximum speed without bottlenecking each other. It will support any desktop size M.2 SSD with a PCIe 4x4 interface, such as Samsung's 980 Pro or WD's Black SN850. Asus has not announced when or even if it will release this innovative design, as it is still just a prototype for now. However, it's likely to be more expensive than other GeForce RTX 4060 Ti models as it uses a custom PCB and PCIe switch. And as you likely already know, most gamers already deem the £389 MSRP of the regular RTX 4060 Ti to be too high. Kicking off the Overclockers blog chapter of the news this week is a roundup of our top five new game releases coming in July. First up is Operation Wolf Returns First Mission VR, which arrives on July 13th. In this remake of the fan favorite classic, enjoy gameplay from the 1987 original, but now with enhanced graphics, parody style voices, survival mode, and support for immersive VR. Next is Space Cats Tactics. Meow, 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 meow. 
This game is full of fast paced battles and cute space cats. What more do you need? This indie title launches on July 24th and immerses the player in nerve wracking space battles and turn based tactical combat. One paw will make the difference between victory and defeat. Third on the list is Remnant 2, a sequel to the original action RPG. Explore the depths of the unknown and fight a deadly evil threatening to destroy reality. Play the in-depth campaign as either a solo warrior or in co-op with a group of friends. Next up, the classic PlayStation exclusive is finally coming to PC. Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart has been optimized for PC and now includes support for features such as real-time ray tracing, AI DLSS, ultra-wide support and enhanced controls. You can try it out for yourself from July 26th. Finally, The Expanse is the latest adventure from award-winning game studio Telltale, arriving on the 27th of July. Step into the shoes of Kamina Drummer and embark on a thrilling exploration across the galaxy. You can choose to either scavenge wrecked ships, venture into zero-g environments, survive against mutiny, or fight to take down deadly pirates. Every decision you make will alter the future and the fate of your teammates. If you want to learn more about any of this month's new games, including the hardware requirements and best PCs to play, I'm going to drop a link to the full blog post below. The final story this week is all about Starfield. September 6th can't come quick enough and the blog team has put together this guide detailing everything there is to know. This includes the gameplay and official PC system requirements. I must say the gameplay looks pretty incredible and it allows the player to pilot and command their ultimate spaceship. You've got the ability to personalize and modify it with unique upgrades, weaponry and shields. Encounter high stakes dogfights, take on unexpected missions, explore endless planets and dock at mysterious star stations and even commandeer enemy ships and take them as your own. Bethesda recommends an AMD Ryzen 5 3600X or Intel i5 10600K, 16 GB of RAM, Radeon RX 6800 XT or RTX 2080 and a whopping 125 gigs of SSD storage. Bethesda doesn't say what resolution and FPS to expect, but it sounds like you're going to need a high-end gaming PC to play. It's also worth noting you'll need a decent broadband connection and an SSD is required. If you want to learn more about Starfield or recommendations of different PCs to get the most out of that exciting gameplay, I'm going to drop a link to the full blog post below. Thanks for watching this week's episode of BIOS Update. Make sure to leave me a comment below letting me know what game you're most looking forward to trying this month. Give this video a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button to catch your upcoming content and I'll see you again in the next one.